good morning or good afternoon now that I'm doing the show a second time <laughs> from Church of Hot Sauce. Pepper Bay here. Uh, I already did the episode, but uh, for some reason Facebook glitched, so I'm doing it a second time. Yay! <laughs> so we'll try to bring the same enthusiasm and the same go get him spirit that we brought the first time around. And uh, we're still going to have a great show. I appreciate y'all for joining me. I'm sorry about the delay. Um, definitely going to look into switching to YouTube and seeing if that works out better. Because this is like the second time we've had something like this happen. So, um, yeah. Uh, glad to have you joining me today. It is a wonderful, wonderful Sunday um, out here in Georgia. It is a little cold, but... Spring is coming. Uh, you can tell because the daffodils have started to bloom, which is a surefire sign. Uh, and uh, last week on Groundhog Day, uh, the groundhog definitely saw his shadow, which means, or did he not see his shadow? Whatever it, he did, uh, we found out that spring is going to be coming early. So that's awesome. Less cold weather, better weather on the horizon. Always better for pepper plants. Get the season started sooner. Get a, uh, a more advan better advantage on, on growing peppers faster. We're all about that. So, appreciate you joining me. As always, may the spice be with you. And also with you. Um, today we're going to be trying uh, some products from Melinda's, Blues Hog, and Ian over at Ruthless Reaper. Um, so pretty excited about that. Um, it's going to be a good one today. Uh, we'll also be talking about challenges in life as well as League of Fire and what that entails in the uh, spicy sermon this afternoon. Um, some upcoming events. Please, 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 please um, check out our YouTube, TikTok, and my X profile. Um, all of them are across all platforms is all the same it is pepper bay lof the lof stands for a league of fire which i am a proud member of um so i like to include that in my name as well world ranking hots uh, world ranking point system check it out please follow them on their social media platforms as well as shahina um, on League of Fire, any updates on new challenges, live videos, upcoming events such as the Tampa belt match. Um, also, I think they're putting together, there's going to be a belt match overseas coming up here soon. Uh, that's super exciting. Uh, please go check them out. Um, I'm going to try to set up a challenge with uh, Jif the Fireman next week, so I'll be doing a live on there. Um, as well with the Scoville Slammer, which is a League of Fire challenge. Um, yeah, please go follow them. Great stuff. Uh, subscribe if you can. If you do challenges yourself, that's always fun as well. Uh, lots of opportunities with that. So, let's get started today. <laughs> I hope, again, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Um, let's get started here. We're going to start off with... I'm going to do a Taylor Swift with this one. We're going to start off with Melinda's Ghost Pepper Ketchup. Um, I grew up with an East Coast dad. He is from Pennsylvania. Um, so I grew up in the morning. If I'm going to have my eggs, there better be some ketchup on it. Um, I've definitely thrown away eggs if I realize that I don't have ketchup. And that's awful. Don't do that. But I've, de I've definitely done that before. So, uh, can't have eggs without ketchup. Um, how's it going, Miguel? Can't have eggs without ketchup. It's the best. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's an East Coast thing, I feel like. The ketchup on the eggs thing. But uh, it's delicious. Hopefully, this one will be too. Uh, ghost pepper ketchup by Melinda's. If you don't know about Melinda's, they're a huge. They're, they're not huge, but... Uh, as far as like the smaller companies go, uh, they're very big. They're all about the community. Um, they've sponsored people in belt matches. Shout out to Eric Midge Wellbaum. He's been sponsored by Melinda's. They're all about giving back to the community. All about you know um, 
it, if one of us wins, we all win kind of attitude. Great company, great lineup of sauces. Please go check them out on social media. We'll be trying three of their sauces today. So um, first we're going to start off with the ghost pepper ketchup. Now, smell-wise, you're automatically getting that acidic note from the tomatoes. Like, there's no going around that. That's that's what ketchup is, okay? It's essentially more or less sh sugar, tomatoes, um, and maybe some, you know, some garlic or some other stuff in there. But for the most part, it's that's pretty much it's that's pretty much what it is. Maybe a little bit of water or something in there. Hey, Chase. So, yeah, automatically acidic note, and you kind of get a little bit of that boot jocula. Um, no ketchup, please. Uh, the boot jocula, it's, it's, a, it's a very distinct uh, aroma. It's, it's, it's savory with just the slightest, slightest hit of sweet. Um, uh, not really a floor, one of those floral peppers unless you get into the chocolate version. And as all of us chili heads know... I, I haven't met somebody that likes chocolate pot specifically. So, and if you do, you're, you, you're probably a little bit of a weirdo, and that's okay. Uh, there's got to be at least one of us. What's up, Ian? So let's go ahead and give this a try here. Like I said, a big fan of uh, big fan of ketchup myself. So um, you can definitely tell that there's something else in here because of the texture of the ketchup. Uh, it's not just like smooth and pureed. Uh, Ian, you would love chocolate pods. Love you, bud. Um, <laughs> Again, a very, very harsh, boom, acidic, acidic with a, a very distinct ghost pepper smell afterwards. Okay. So right away, you get that, you get that tomato acidic flavor in the, in the front portion of your palate. Literally right afterwards, you get a nice little on that on that the back line that separates the front and part of your palate and the back part of your palate. You start to get a burn right there that then flows backwards onto the back part of your palate and then envelops the back of the back of your mouth and into your throat. It's very enjoyable, not too aggressive. Um, it grows a little bit. Um, it's it's very very delicious. Very very unique. Um, as far as a, as a ketchup is concerned, I don't, I've never really had a lot of spicy ketchups um, that actually have like pepper products in them. Besides, like you know, some kind of like mainstream stuff where it's like uh, you know, like oh, it's spicy ketchup. No, it's not. It's it's just ketchup. Stop it. Uh, so <laughs> this actually, this is pretty delicious. This is a nice 7.5 out of 10. Nothing wrong with that. Um, I, you know, with my eggs, I usually, I, I always have ketchup, but I've always got some hot sauce on there too, uh, more or less, unless I'm going straight bear day. Cause then that's weird. So, so, um, Melinda's ghost pepper ketchup, check that out. I found this over at Wally world. They've got some more, uh, some new flavored stuff in those $1 bins. Uh, go check them out again. Uh, as far I haven't had too many other sauces, but as far as I know, they have a great lineup. Um, as far as uh, their sauces are concerned, it seems to be a crowd favorite. So, next up, we've got Melinda's Pizza Hot Sauce. Um, for those of you that don't know, my career as a chef um, started off with pizza. Um, right out of culinary school, I worked at a place called Sun Valley, Idaho, uh, a premier ski resort, one of the oldest in the country. Had the opportunity to learn from some very talented individuals out there right out of culinary school. Um, I love pizza. I love its history, uh, the sense of community that it, it brings with American style pizza. Um, and, uh, for those that don't know back in the day, uh, you know, uh, you used to have, especially with like the large immigration that was happening through Ellis Island, uh, you had communities that had bakers, they had, you know, they had, uh, uh, a butcher that, you know, all these, all these little, um, little small businesses that just throughout that brought culture in from other regions of the world and uh, American pizza was born by those small communities coming together with their extras the baker had some leftover dough you had a butcher uh, maybe had some salted salami or something like that you had Germans that had bratwurst and sausages would be thrown on the pizza you had the Italians that had the tomato sauce 
Um, and once that came together, that's that's literally how pizza was born. So I love, love, love the history of pizza. Um, it, uh, my career keeps bringing me back to pizza. I have a signature sauce that's made out of uh, pineapple for the base and not tomato. Um, maybe one day I'll bottle that and sell that, but it's, uh, I, it's very unique. So I love pizza and it was just national pizza, pizza day. So I have to give this a shot. We're going to look at the ingredient list here. We got pepper mash, which is going to be cayenne pepper, sweet pepper. We got white vinegar, water, salt, tomato puree, white onion, garlic, pepper flakes, and xanthan gum. Okay. Uh, for those who don't know, I do have an opinion on xanthan gum. I don't like it. That's just me. Um, if you know what you're doing, there's no need for xanthan gum to fix the viscosity of your sauce. Um, it's okay if you have to shake your sauce before using it. There's nothing wrong with that. We Taylor Swift it on this show all the time. So, and for those who don't know, if you want your sauce featured on hot ones, it can't have xanthan gum. I think it makes. I think it messes with the fla overall flavor of the pepper a little bit. Maybe that's just me, um, but with my palate, I've always noticed that it 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 it, it affects it a little bit, uh, if not a lot. So let's go ahead and see what this is like. Go ahead and cleanse the palate a little bit. Okay, so right away, you get the acidity of the tomato on the nose. Um, then it goes right into that 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 vinegar that vinegar smell. It's very distinct, and then finishes with 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 that that almost like a crushed uh, crushed pepper flake kind of smell to it. Maybe a little garlic on the end, but uh, for the most part, those are the three palatable senses that you're getting from that. So consistency, because it's a xanthan gum, it's going to be. It's not going to be watery. It's going to be almost a consistency of ketchup, if you will, since we just had some. Yep. Straight from the tomato. Straight into that bite from that vinegar. Very delicious. And then it goes right into that red pepper flake garlicky tone to it be very good accentuating a creaminess of, of a quality cheese on a pizza as well as a saltiness product would be pepperoni bacon sausage on top it's very delicious um, very straightforward not too spicy um, so it's not going to take control of the show it's just gonna it's just gonna add a little accent to the quality ingredients that you already have on the pizza which that's always nice when you're talking about a sauce specifically one that's supposed to accentuate a specific product um, such as pizza this is nice this is a nice little 8 out of 10 uh, nothing wrong with that um, if it didn't have the xanthan gum uh, that pepper flake might come out a little bit stronger which I wouldn't mind but it has xanthan gum in it so it is what it is it does not taste like pizza uh, <laughs> it, uh, uh, again it just um, the acidity from the tomato vinegar bite and then uh that nice crushed red pepper flake uh garlic aspect on the end of it it's good i definitely put that on some pizza um that'll be gone in about two or three slices for me no problem yum all right next up we've got melinda's green sauce It's Melinda's green sauce. On the ingredients list here, white vinegar, water, jalapeno, pepper mash, green tomato, green tomato, which is very different. I don't know if I've ever seen that used in a sauce. Uh, we'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, sugar, cilantro, salt, spinach powder, garlic, lime juice, habanero pepper mash, citric acid, and again, xanthan gum. So, uh, green tomatoes. Green tomatoes are very unique in their flavor composition because they are, um, they're not, they're not as acidic as, or, or have that sweet tail end flavor like a, a ripened tomato has. It's almost got a bite to it like a, a vinegar does. So it's very, very different. 
um, yeah, a, a green tomato. It's like it, because it's not it's not red. It's it's unripe. It's 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 not it's not fully developed flavor wise. Uh, it's very unique, like uh, fried green tomatoes. Um, if you've never had them before, I highly recommend that. Uh, love, love, love that flavor composition. Dredge some sliced green tomatoes, uh, put them in panko crumbs or just or just in a flour. Fry those bad boys up. Very, very delicious. Uh, very much its own flavor profile. Delicious. So we're gonna go ahead and try this. Try this bad boy out. Pre-ripe. So again, with that xanthan gum, that's why you're getting that consistency. We don't have to shake up the sauce. Yeah, right away you can tell that it's a uh, you get you get a little bit of the cilantro and the spinach smell that's coming out. That that earthy green green kind of aspect of a smell. But for the most part, it's definitely that that green tomato smell that's coming out of it. I'm not really getting any peppers. I'm not getting the jalapenos or the habanero mash whatsoever when I'm smelling it. So, right away, green tomato flavor, <clears throat> hit with a little bit of the vinegar, goes right into um, that, 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 that fresh flavor Almost a lightness that's provided by the by the herbs that are put into it, the spinach and the cilantro. So it's a thicker sauce, but somehow it seems lighter because of that greenage that's provided into the sauce. Um, at the very tail end, you get that jalapeno flavor. I'm not really getting a whole much of the habanero, um, but very delicious. That's I mean, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Um, I probably give that a nice little. Nice little seven out of ten. That's quality. I put that on stuff. Um, I could put put see this being brushed, uh, used in some using some butter. Put this on a roasted chicken. Um, maybe add a little bit of garlic. Um, I could see this used as a base in a chimichurri sauce. You know, add add a little bit of this to a chimichurri sauce um, on a pizza. Um, toss in a little bit of pasta. Make some pasta. You know what I'm saying? Um, very delicious. Nothing wrong with that. Nice little solid seven out of ten. Um, very good quality sauce. Um, Miguel, no, I will not be bringing that uh, coat anymore. But I will have a new coat. So, um, <laughs> you'll 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 all see that it'll be it'll be a new coat. I think I've worn that to two belt matches. So I'll I gotta I gotta do some do something different. For this one, okay. Okay, so here, oh my goodness, spilling all over the place. So next up, we've got a new company I didn't even know existed until yesterday. I was going through the dollar bins at Wally World because I'm waiting on some shipment from of sauces from. Um, some creators so uh, in the meantime obviously you gotta gotta come up with some content for the for the sauces today we're gonna be trying out blues hog um, which is a uh, seems like a, a, a decent sized company they've got a pretty pretty decent sized following on social media already um, this is the blues hog wild wing sauce bam um, ingredients wise, it's, it's a crazy long ingredient list. I was noticing this earlier. This is a small bottle and that's the ingredient list. Now, granted, first ingredients is hot sauce and then it lists everything that's in that hot sauce. Um, uh, then it lists, um, ranch and all the ingredients in the ranch uh, there's a lot of like uh, sodium bicarbonate like that kind of that that kind of like verbiage where it's like how do i pronounce that kind of stuff so it's a lot of fillers a lot of lots of different stuff that's used in these different products barbecue sauce now the problem with that is is it's it's 
it makes it seem like it's a it's a it's a it's it's like you put a couple sauces together to make your own sauce instead of coming up with an original composition does that make sense like I don't want to use the word lazy, but we can all make a sauce by throwing other sauces together and trying to find a flavor profile within other sauces to make our own sauce. But it takes some true talent and skill set to use your own ingredients to come up with a unique composition and a unique style of sauce uh, on your own without using somebody else's effort that they've already put into it. So um, I'm going to use it lazy. Okay. Uh, that, that's what my opinion is. So. See what it smells like. And I'm not even kidding you. It smells like... Okay. Right away, you get the dill aspect from a ranch dressing, that creaminess note as far as the smell. And then you it automatically goes into like a barbecue sauce smell and finishes with a hot sauce smell. So it literally smells like three sauces were combined to make this. And again, that's fine. But I don't have high hopes for it. So, uh, lowest sauce I've ever given uh, a score to was my Tabanero. And it was their XXX sauce. And I gave it a 3 out of 10. So, uh, let's see what this one goes. Let's see, as far as consistency is concerned. Very smooth. Uh, definitely looks like there's some kind of shelf stabilizers, Anthem gum in there. And again, it's fine. It's just not my preferred. Yeah. Okay. Literally goes from ranch, creaminess of a ranch, to right into smokiness of a barbecue flavor. And then finishes like with a vinegary kick, like a buffalo style hot sauce. It's fine. Um, would it probably be good on wings? Yeah. Um, am I going to reach for some of my other hot sauces to throw on some wings before this one? Yeah, you betcha. Um, I'm not impressed. Um, sorry, Blues Hog. I'm just going to give my honest opinion here. Um, it's, it's a 4 out of 10. It's at maybe 4.5. 4 I'm not getting anything original from this whatsoever. I think that's fine. But I think one of the one of the greatest things about hot sauce is the versatilities and the differences. I mean, that that is why we all enjoy, oh, somebody came out with a new hot sauce. Like, I wonder, like, one of my sponsors is High Desert. Zach has a very unique skill set in being able to use quality ingredients and ones that maybe people wouldn't think to use because they're so out there and making just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sauces. Out of this world sauces. Co-conspirator, if you haven't had that, mm. um, What's the one with the slug on the the logo? He, he he's just got he's got crazy sauces where you're like, this is in this, and then you try it and you're like, oh my god. Blues hog, four out of ten. Not impressed. Somebody on here said that you got good rubs, so maybe we'll maybe we'll buy some of your rubs and see how those are. Excuse me. Ooh. We're cruising. I agree. Um, when when vinegar vinegar is a good encompassing flavor, it's not a good star of the show. So if it's third or fourth fiddle and it helps round out the overall flavor of the sauce, I'm all about a vinegar flavor. Um, but if it's the first and last thing that you taste in a sauce, I'm ill impressed because I feel like you don't know what you're doing. I'm just saying, um, I feel like you don't know how to flavor, you don't know how to, how, how, how to, how to truly develop a flavor. This is coming from a, 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 you know, an over 10 year chef. Okay. I've been there, done that. I've, 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 
I've worked for some of the best chefs in the United States. I worked on private islands. Um, I worked at resorts. Um, you know, I, 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 I've been places. <laughs> so I'm not just talking out of talking out of my rear. Last but not least, uh, we do have the creator in the house, so this is exciting. Uh, Ian from uh, Ruthless Reaper. So I don't have the video up on my YouTube, and I probably won't because I'm not proud of this moment. Um, in within Cap Crew, which if you don't know, Cap Crew is pretty much where the big dogs go to play um, in the spicy community. A lot of challenges going through there that are far, far hotter than than anything that we got going on that's on the you know the regular market. Um, Ian put up a challenge on there that said first person to go in and eat a cup of mayo and mix in two full Robbie's, I'll send you a bottle of sauce. And I said, all right, bet. Like, <laughs> like so I, I hopped on that. Um, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Um, so this is, this is just a big old thing of tincture. Um, tincture mixed with mayo is amazing. Wouldn't have thought. It doesn't break. It actually... Go, it, it, it mixes in very very well try that stuff as a sandwich spread you will not be disappointed I was I was actually blown away and I was able to eat that cup of mayo no problem I'm, I'm a little bit ashamed of myself but got a free bottle of hot sauce so I mean you know so uh, I, I don't know um, maybe Ian can fill us in um, this is something that he is, this is the second year or not the first year that he's done this. Um, this is the bootleg Reaper batch one. Now I don't like opening up sauces that are autographed, uh, because I like just keeping them on my shelf. I would say this is a rare sauce cause it was uh, only a certain amount of these made. Uh, and it was made by a friend, which makes, makes it even that much, uh, valuable in my heart. Uh, I really appreciate Ian sending this over to me. Um, ingredients on here is going to be peppers, rum, fruit, spices, and herbs. Uh, he said it was a super small batch, 20 bottles. So, uh, very, very appreciative of getting the sauce and getting the opportunity to try this. I don't know if anybody else has reviewed this sauce as far as, um, in media at any point. Um, so if, if I'm the first, I'm, I'm very proud of that. And even if I'm the last out of the 20, I'm still very proud of that. Cause it, I mean, look at that label. It's so cool. There's like, there's like watermarks. I don't know if the camera's picking up, but there's like watermarks behind it and stuff. And that just, I, I think it's cool to shoot. So we're going to give this one a, a try here. Now, Ian wanted me to, to, uh, drink the whole bottle. Uh, but before I do these shows, I don't eat breakfast. Um, so I'm not going to die today. I'm not, like, I'm not, I'm not going to drink this whole bottle. Um, his name is Ruthless Reaper for crying out loud. So I can only imagine that, uh, down in this whole bottle would just be just like doing like a Scoville slammer or something. So I'm, I'm not going to do that to myself cause I got stuff to do today. Um, but we're definitely going to give it a try though. Woo. Wow. Um, first thing that comes to mind when smelling this is if you, if anybody out there has ever had a king cake, um, if, if like for fat Tuesday or Mardi Gras, uh, it's, it's very much compromised of that spice. Um, I'm getting like, I'm, I'm definitely getting a lot of clove, definitely get a lot of clove, maybe like some card, uh, not cardamom, but uh, maybe, maybe some cardamom, uh, but cinnamon and star anise, like that kind of flavor aspect. Mmm. Mmm. But also that, that rum in there, that, that almost caramelized sugarness that comes from fermentation with a rum. That, that smell that's from that rum automatically brings out the fruit that is used in this. Like, like hands down, it, it, it helps envelop and, 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 and bring out the, that natural sugar state of those fruits. Wow. It, just by smelling this, I can tell you this is going to be a unique sauce that I've, no, I've never had anything like it right off the bat. I'm not going to chug it. <laughs> wow. And it's crazy. It's like just from the smell, like I don't smell really any pepper. 
I know that's not going to be the case as soon as I try it, but <laughs> the smell, I'm not, I'm not getting any, any pepper forwardness. So the consistency is absolutely beautiful. Almost like a thin apple butter uh, kind of consistency to it. Wow. So right away, clove, clove. Um, the clove hits. And right away you get the two sides of your palate. You get the rum and the fruit flavor going on. And then right, right out of the, rolls right into the back part of your palate, that, that heat. Um, I'm definitely getting some Reaper. I don't know what that, oh, it's nutmeg. Nutmeg and the cardamom. And, oh, P Primo peppers, yep. Yeah, there's a heat to that bad boy. Um, um, that's what we call a, oh, oh, oh that's spicy. Uh, that's definitely a, a heat level on there. Somebody, even somebody that's training like myself right now for a pepper, pepper belt match. I'm getting a three, almost a four. It's delicious. Um, it's, it's building at the same time, but without being like too over accentuated. The clove is very, very much there. Um, is it clove? It, it sure tastes like it's clove. It's got to be the allspice. Uh, Ian says cinnamon, cardamom, nutmeg, and allspice. The spice blend is very, very impactful. Now, I'm very curious. Very curious where Ian got that. Uh, where he got the inspiration for this. Um, it's always interesting when you know chefs where their trail has led them um they get overall in your life where you've cooked who you've learned from they get they give you um they give you your authenticness to your own flavor that you provide to your your different dishes like myself i you know whether it's I'm cooking Indian food, Asian food, uh, you know, if I'm cooking seafood, if I'm cooking um, uh, Tex-Mex, if I'm cooking barbecue, I, I grew up on the West Coast, Oregon, Washington, California. So a lot of my inspiration comes for things that I've experienced myself. Got a buddy, Randy Carolla. That man has spent a lot of, he'd probably love his sauce. Uh, it's, that man spent a lot of, either was born or, or spent a lot of time in Louisiana. And with his, the stuff that he shares, with the products that he has, with the artwork that he has, you can tell that that's, that's something that he has experienced quite a bit of um, through his journeys and his culinary aspect and where his flavor profiles come. When he's showing that he cooked roux for six, six hours to make gumbo. That man is, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's certain things that you're going to learn in certain areas. And that's how you get your inspiration for your flavor profiles. That's very different, bro. Um, this is delicious. Uh, heat profile is a three or a four. It's definitely getting my nose to run a little bit. So it's, I mean, the heat def is definitely there. Um, this is like an 8.3, 8.4 out of 10. Very unique, very different. Um, we're going to take another little spoonful. See if I can see if I can taste that pineapple aspect in there. Woo! An allspice, my guy. Whoa, whoa! Very different, very delicious. I don't think you can get your hands on this whatsoever, but please go check out Ruthless Reaper. I believe he's changing up his logos and stuff. So he's got a sale going on in his sauces. I don't know if that sale is still going on. 
Uh, but, but regardless of the sales going still going on, uh, please go check out Ruthless, Ruthless Reaper. He can make some great stuff. He's a great individual. He's all about the community. Um, plus, his, his kiddo, his kiddo's on his way up on making his own sauces. Um, can't wait to see what he comes. Out. I wasn't able to get a bottle of his sauce, um, but can't wait to see. Oh, he's got Ian's got one bottle left. So if you want that sauce, if you want this sauce, hit that man up. Um, great person, great sauce. Love it. One of the best shit talkers in the game. Um, love you, bud. All right. Woo. Okay. Well, now we're going to move on into the spicy sermon for this afternoon. We're going to talk about challenges. We're going to talk about challenges in a couple different aspects here. So, when when training for like League of Fire challenges, okay, me personally, uh, one thing that I do to get my mind right for a League of Fire challenge and to prepare myself for not only being able to, to uh, like obviously eating more spicy to be able to train for those challenges, but in order to be able to complete those challenges in the right way, um, when I take showers, at the end of the shower, I, I go all the way to cold water. I let it, I let it hit my chest, and roll down, and I, I, I stand in that cold shower, uh, ice cold shower, probably about five six minutes. My eyes closed, deep breathing, just focusing on my breathing, focusing that the the cold is not affecting me. Just like you would when you're doing a spicy challenge, because you want that, you want to focus on the task at hand, which is getting past the time limit not letting it affect you too much to where you you know your adrenaline starts going over too too overboard and where you overthink it and then you you know it comes back up or anything like that you want to you want to take full control and get that that outside influence uh out of your mindset now the same can be said about about daily life um for instance um, something that happened at work to me the other day is something happened where we were working on a project and while we were working on the project, um, I make transformers, um, uh, the electrical unit. We're working on these transformers, these specific units for an order. And, uh, we had to do a bunch of different things to them in, in thinking that that was going to be the right process to get them ready for that order. That was extra work that we normally don't have to do, but who cares? Um, the order ended up being canceled and, and we could have known about that sooner. So we ended up having to do a bunch of stuff to the units to take them apart and get them usable for another order. Um, somebody in my in my unit was, was upset by that. They were letting it get to them, letting them affect them further along in the work day. And I didn't understand. I said, why, why are you letting that affect you? Oh, we had all this extra work to do. Okay. It doesn't affect our end of the day numbers. It doesn't affect, it shouldn't affect um, your outlook on the rest of your day. You, it shouldn't upset you. One of my examples was if there's pallet, pallet A at one side of the warehouse and pallet B at the other side of the warehouse. And somebody tells me, we need the boxes moved from pallet A to pallet B by hand, and I move those boxes, and then they go, oh, actually, we need all those boxes on pallet B moved to pallet A. Okay, I'm going to do it, but I'm not going to care. It's not, it's not going to affect me or make me upset because at the end of the day, I'm getting paid, and I'm doing what I'm being asked to do. So nobody's going to hold me accountable and say I'm wrong because I'm doing what I was asked to do. You can't let outside influences affect how your how you go about your daily life those and we'll call them challenges okay you're always going to have challenges in life because not everything is going to be daisies and hot sauce okay there's going to be bad moments in life there's going to be bad burns okay but what you do with those challenges and how you what power you give them is going to is going to show how you further progress in life 
okay when, when when ignoring the challenges or ignoring the, the 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 bad side of the burn that you when you're doing a league of fire challenge especially a harder one like a scoville slammer that's up there at 16 million scoville units you you need to ignore it you need to ignore that outside influence and focus on the task at hand which is just getting it done you're not focusing on the burn in your gut you're not focusing on throwing up or anything like that you're focusing on the task at hand which is just getting past that time it's just like that in life if you if it if the only thing that, that will affect you is stuff that you let affect you okay it's very simple it's a very it's a hard lesson in life to learn but it's a very easy lesson at the same time and as soon as you can focus on the task at hand or focus on things that you can control the things that you can't control the negative aspect of those fall by the wayside I promise you again it's 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 not it's not the easiest lesson to learn um, sometimes it does take time but I tell you what when you learn how to do that and how to overcome things like that and not give them power over you man life's get life gets a lot sweeter I tell you that I tell you that Ooh. Um, it, it, it's easier said than done but practice makes perfect and when you do when you are able to accomplish it it makes your life that much easier on, on focusing on tasks um, and and focusing on the good in your life well guys this is the second time that I've done this episode today so uh, I am uh, I, I gotta get started on cooking some stuff uh, for the Super Bowl uh, my guest for today is going to be uh, um, Niners win 31 to 28 um, for those of you that don't know I am also besides being a chili head uh, I'm a season ticket holder of the Chargers uh, as well as the sports editor for the Los Angeles Journal uh, you can look at the Los Angeles Journal. My picture is up there. I, I promise you I'm not fibbing. Um, I love sports ball. Uh, I love that it gives me something else to think about besides the negative aspects about life. It's one of my escapes, just like peppers are. Um, so I very much enjoy the sports ball. Uh, if you enjoy sports ball, please enjoy the Super Bowl. Go ahead and comment and tell me how you're going to be enjoying um, your Super Bowl day with a little bit of spice. Um, if there's any products that you want me to review on here, please don't hesitate to ask or hook me up with that uh, producer um, as far as messaging them or, or telling them about me. Uh, please don't forget to follow me on all platforms. Um, all of them I'm listed as Pepper Bay, P-E-P-P-E-R-B-A-E-L-O-F. Um, that's YouTube, TikTok, and X. Um, please like and subscribe. Tell your friends about me. Uh, let's help grow this um, beautiful adventure that I'm on. Really appreciate the support. Really appreciate everybody watching me today. Um, and as always, this has been Pepper Bay. I hope everybody has a great, wonderful rest of your Sunday. I'll see you same time, same place next Sunday, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. And as always, may the spice be with you and also with you. Love you, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your day.